Boom, good evening and welcome everybody. Today is August 28th, it's a Monday, and it's 5, 10 p.m. Eastern time. Hope everyone had a very great weekend. Hope uh, some Tesla drivers out there may be excited for 11.4.7. We're still on 11.4.4, which is okay. We're still going to do our standard route going north, um, south, sorry, for our evening commute. And we'll see if we can provide some commentary, feedback. So we're on a single lane road here, 30 mile per hour zone. Dip in the road, and now we can proceed up this hill here. Um, from what I've seen in our experience is when we're close to the end of the life cycle of a software update, we tend to see some pretty good performance. Uh, and that's what we're seeing now is we're seeing just zero disengagement drives in areas that I've never been to before, uh, haven't been to a lot. You know just different routes that I don't normally take and we're still able to have zero disengagement drives which is very impressive very impressive um, yeah there's still one intersection on my route here where I might disengage just to provide the feedback where we need to merge over a couple lanes simultaneously and we're doing it one lane at a time. Whereas for, for a little while there, we were doing them simultaneously. So I might just disengage there if it doesn't give me the behavior that I'm looking for just to provide that feedback. So now these, turn, these cars can go around this turning vehicle they're just being very slow to do that. <laughs> FSD Beta was slow to do that too, but was able to perform the maneuver. Was very unsure about itself, but did it. All right, so this is very tight, windy, curvy road here. Um, all right, very nice job. Very minimal input on my part there. The only thing I did was change our maximum set speed from 33 to 30. The only benefit that granted us is that it immediately decelerated us a little bit earlier than Beta would have in preparation for that tight turn. Um, but once um, we were in the turn, Beta was handling the speed on its own and, and handled the rest of the deceleration, which was good. Very impressive. And then that series of intersections that we make look very easy there used to be very challenging because it's a very um, obscure lane selection. It's hard to determine which is the correct lane to follow. And uh, we made that look very easy. Plenty of extra braking there. Plenty of extra braking there.
Wow, that was really good. I gave no accelerator press there, and there were plenty of things for FSD to get confused on there. There were multiple cars trying to turn in the same intersection at the same time, and the only thing that was really clear was our path, and Beta was able to recognize that and gave us no hesitation in pushing us through that intersection. That was really good. We have our first unprotected left coming up here at this light. So we do need to yield potentially to two lanes of traffic. Doesn't look like there will be any cars here. We made a nice fresh yellow and we adjusted for the fact that that car was over his lane. Looks like they gave us some new asphalt here. This is brand new for us. So now this is an example of FSD beta handling streets without lane markings where there previously used to be lane markings. Would love to see what would happen to Cruz or Waymo if, the, if they were in this type of situation. God, a Tesla feels so good on, on fresh asphalt. Oh, the, the, if you haven't, all right, if you haven't driven a Tesla yourself, especially if you haven't been in one, like if you haven't even been a passenger in one, but if you haven't actually driven one yourself, please do us both a favor and use my referral link to schedule yourself a demo drive, okay? It's free of charge, there's no obligation. It's a test drive, they call it a demo drive. It gives you the full opportunity to drive a Tesla for a half an hour or more if, they, if, they're, if they're amenable. Um, It'll give me some referral points, which I'm kind of starving for some. I have zero currently. It would be cool to even get to 500. Um, this way I can enter that cyber truck raffle. That would be cool. So, hey, five people watching wanted to schedule themselves a test drive. You get to experience the instantaneous acceleration the superior handling and this fascinating technology that a Tesla offers. I've actually convinced two people to get Teslas. Um, a good friend of mine bought his Tesla last year at some point before the new referral program was put in place. So that was unfortunate. I gave him his test drive in his Tesla, in my Tesla, I should say. Um, and then I also convinced a client of mine to get a Model 3 Performance last month. And <laughs> he, for some reason, decided on a whim to just get a Model 3 Performance at a used car dealership nearby. They had a 22 Model 3 Performance sitting there and they gave him a price of 44,000 and he thought it was such a fantastic deal and he just did it without even telling me. He told me the day after. He was like, "Yeah, I got a freaking I got I got myself my Tesla yesterday." And I nearly like I I was so like let down because you know like I had been talking to him about Teslas and the buying experience and giving him pointers, you know, go for, go for used inventory, um, existing inventory with a discount, you know, use the referral code. This way you get three months of free FSD, the $7,500 tax credit and telling him about all this. And then he was just like, oh yeah, yeah. I just, 
went ahead and got a used one. It's like... Okay. So, instead of... So, here's what he opted for. He opted to get a used... 2022 Model 3 Performance with about 15k miles for $44,000. Uh, and who knows what APR he got on his financing for that um, for a used vehicle. So then he doesn't get the $7,500 tax credit. He wouldn't. He didn't get the $500 New York um, discount off MSRP. He didn't get the $500 referral bonus. He didn't get the discount off brand new existing inventory, which last time I checked, there was a Model 3 Performance sitting there for $48,000, brand new, 2023. It's supposed to cost $54,000. So that means they're giving you a $6,000 discount off the MSRP. That's huge. Plus, he didn't get the three months of FSD for free. He didn't get a brand new car, whereas with zero miles, instead he got a 22 with 15,000 miles. It's just a bit... Um, just a bit of a letdown, you know? Now, with that being said, if anyone is interested in purchasing a new electric vehicle, it's literally the best time that it's ever been to get a, use, uh, uh, a new electric vehicle right now. So, I mean, I already talked about a bunch of the benefits. Um, a brand new Model 3 performance, if you spec'd it out on Tesla's website, is about fifty-four thousand um, dollars, but currently, if if you just go to existing inventory, brand new cars that have already been made and are just sitting at a local Tesla service center, ready for you to pick up, and they're offering it for forty-eight thousand. Then on top of that you get a $7,500 federal tax credit. So when you go to file your taxes, they'll reduce your taxable income by that amount. And then what else? You also get $500 off the MSRP for using my referral code. You, on top of that, you get three months of the full self-driving subscription for free. That's uh, $199 plus tax value. Um, then there are various state incentives on top of the federal tax credit, which will vary drastically depending on your state. When I got my Model 3 in 21, I got the $2,000 New York State um, MSRP discount. So that's great. It's not a tax credit. It comes right off of your amount due um, when you pay for the car. Um, so that's really good. It's not like it comes off of the loan amount or anything. It literally comes off of the amount that you have to pay when you go to pick up your car. Like that's awesome. Like the taxes and fees that you have to pay for the DMV comes right off of that. Um, what else do you get? Oh, and by the way, so currently, so in New York, it's $500 for the New York State rebate if you get a long range or a Model 3 performance. If you get the standard range, the discount is $2,000 still. Just an FYI. So if you go to Tesla's website, you can browse the incentives state to state and you can check yours to see what incentives are available for you. 
the cost of ownership once you have the car is as low as it can be. There's no oil changes, okay? There's, you don't buy gas. The only maintenance for this car is the windshield wiper fluid. That's it. That, and you can change your cabin air filters like every year or every other year if you want to. Um, that's it. Plus, and then we haven't even mentioned autopilot yet. If you notice, we haven't even mentioned the fact that the car does zero to 60 in 3.1 seconds, which is faster than like 99% of cars that have ever been built. Um, on top of that, it has the best autonomous system that's publicly available. You literally get to operate a system which is on par with paid systems which are in use like Waymo and Cruise. You get similar results to that and you're the operator of it in your own personal vehicle. You get to use it whenever you want. You're not limited by geographical location or time of day. You can use it whenever you want. I like overcoming a lot of the ob objections that people present in regards to electric vehicle ownership. And one of the main ones is where do I charge or I can't charge at home or how much does it cost to charge? I live in an apartment, so I don't have home charging and I also don't have a charger at my work location. And when I first got the car, I was just using the supercharger. Because I guarantee you, if you look nearby, you can go to Tesla's website and search for superchargers. You have one in your, in your nearby you, right? Maybe it's not in your specific town. Maybe it's, maybe it's 10 minutes away in the next town over. For me, it's in my hometown. And a lot of people have multiple superchargers. It really depends in where you live. Do you live in California or you know, do you live in the cent center of the country where there's literally no population density? Um, but with that said, there is a very nice planned out map of all across the United States, Canada, of all superchargers. And it's in other countries too. So you can literally take this car anywhere. Like it's the best thing you could imagine for a road trip because of autopilot. And most people need to stop every three hours anyway to take a bathroom break, stretch their legs, um, even s like switch, like who's driving. Like, you know, even if you're taking turns driving, like how long are you driving straight before you need a break? Most the majority of people it's three hours so what you do when you're road tripping is you just stop at the supercharger which is along your route and then people are like oh well how do you know which is the best one to stop at what do you need to research it ahead of time and calculate how far you need to go and it's like no you literally just punch in your destination on your screen and the navigation will automatically calculate your destination, what your current state of charge is, an assortment of other factors, including the weather, um, the temperature, your tire pressure, how busy the roads are, and will tell you which supercharger you need to stop at in order to reach your, your destination successfully. It's like I... I've been driving for oh, 18, 20, uh, 17, 18 years now, and I've never managed to run out of gas in a car 
and I've never managed to have my car, my electric car die on me. I literally feel like you need to be trying to do that on purpose or just a completely careless person if that happens to you. Because the screen will tell you, you need to charge your car now. <laughs> like it'll literally say, like if you, if you try to go somewhere where you can't, it'll one, automatically route you, route you to a supercharger instead of your destination. Um, so how do you let the car die? You do it on purpose or you're just an idiot and you don't know what matters and you don't know what to pay attention to. Like either way, it's user error. Um, so there's that, there's overcoming that objection. Then there's the cost, right? So I had mentioned I, originally I was just using the superchargers and it was still cheaper than gas because they were charging me like 22 cents uh, per kilowatt or something. And it would cost me like 15 bucks to charge the car from essentially zero to a hundred, right? It would cost me like $15. And I was okay with that. I was doing that once a week. It was perfect. It was cheaper than gas. I was happy. Um, then, um, you know, COVID happened, prices started to go up and They, the price went from 22 cents to like that's upsetting the person behind us just decided they didn't want to let us in so we'll just have to take an alternate route Um, if you can, so when the price of the supercharging went up to like literally double what I was paying, that's when it became, you know, just as expensive as gas, if not like a little bit more, if you're solely relying on it. And that's when I was like, you know what, let me find something else. So I had been using public chargers too, like whenever they were nearby. And what I did was I figured out where the free chargers were nearby. So municipalities, towns and cities have set up free chargers that are zeros, like zero dollars no cost you can charge your car there um there might be like parking fees so you need to be cognizant of that right um i've figured out a way where i literally pay nothing to charge this car 100% of the time. I don't use superchargers unless I'm going on a road trip somewhere. Um, sometimes I'll just leave the car parked overnight at a free charger. Um, I've found one at a trail so I can go for runs and um, leave the car parked on the free charger. I found one at a supermarket so I can go food shopping and leave it parked on a free charger. I found one near a gym, so I can park it on the free charger and go to the gym. Now, um, you should download, there's a specific website and app which will show you where all nearby chargers are for all um, companies, not just Tesla chargers. It'll show you everything. So I would recommend using that. This way you can get a good idea of where all the nearby chargers are. And mind you, over time, electric vehicles are going to become the norm. California and New York have passed laws that by 2035, if you're selling a new car, it has to be electric. They're banning the sale of gas cars. Okay. Um, 
And this is a good thing because it's good for the environment. It'll just um, bring the prices of EVs down even further when um, more and more people are buying them and more manufacturers are making them. So we did have to have a dis disengagement there where FSD was very hesitant to make that left turn and it was probably because I forced us into a lane that it didn't want to be in. You, there are two turning lanes there so it's a very complicated intersection and you can make that left from either of the two leftmost lanes. So, but the thing is you then have to make, get into the right. So the best thing to do is to get into the rightmost of turning lane. This way, then all you need to do is one lane change into the right lane. So we were originally in the leftmost lane and what I wanted, what I did was I forced us using my directional to move us into the rightmost turning lane, okay? Then what Beta needed to do was then make its left turn from there, which it was very hesitant to do. Um, I, what I believe happened was the occupancy network just couldn't really label that as a as a turning lane so it wanted us to go straight and I didn't want to have to reroute us a second time so I gave us the disengagement to have us stay on our route and um, provide that that feedback um, to Tesla I don't think I remember to do a voice recording but it's okay they'll see that they'll see a nice long half hour drive with one disengagement I'm sure that's that's data that stands out to them. So they'll you know take a look and say, okay, well, what happened in that specific situation there? Um. So back to back to continue my train of thought here. If you charge like I do using these public chargers, it's 100% it's cheaper than gas, right? Now, what the majority of people who own EVs are doing is charging at home, which sounds lovely to me. I would just would love to do that. It just sounds amazing. Um, and then people are like, oh, it must cost a fortune or oh, it must take a day to charge the car. And it's just like, all right, let me overcome these objections for you. So, um, the whole, it would take forever if I charged at home thing. You leave your car plugged in overnight and you wake up with a free, a full tank of gas every single day and you never go to gas stations. So it literally, literally saves you time as opposed to driving a gas vehicle, okay? Second, uh, how, it would be so expensive, right? Electricity is like nine cents a kilowatt hour or something ridiculously low. Um, that's what I pay, or 14 cents a kilowatt hour or something ridiculously low. So if you charge it home, Rule of thumb is it's about 20% the cost of filling your car up with gasoline. Somewhere around there, probably less. Because you have all these EV incentives, like you can charge during green hours or whatever, like overnight charging, like off-peak hours, and you get discounts. And then you can get really into it and get solar panels and be a net producer, and then you're literally getting paid from your electric company and then you could take it a step further and get a power wall, which is a giant battery, which would, would store excess um, electricity for you to use whenever you need it. 
Um, these are all things that excite me and really make me want to work harder to to have all these, you know, great um, energy friendly products. I hope everyone enjoyed our drive for today. I keep forgetting to ask at the beginning of the video, but if you did enjoy, I would appreciate a subscription to the channel as it really does help us uh, to grow over time. Um, that was it. That was a nice one disengagement drive um, for us today on our standard route. Some good feedback for Tesla to look at. Um, we'll catch everyone in the next video.